example, if they were expecting you to become someone great in future, like a teacher, a professional teacher, a banker, and tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow you are. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are a truck pusher or something <laughs> like. Hello there. Welcome to another episode on FNF Catchy Dialogues, your favorite podcast in the whole wide world. It's me again. It's Francis again, but we've got another person with us and would like him to introduce himself. Okay. My name is Kweku Akwa Ando, popularly called Papa Ando. I'm a nurse by profession. Are you popular? Yeah, I could say I'm popular in my family. In my family, I'm popular. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm very popular in my family. Yeah. <laughs> And I was popular in, in, in school, yeah. In school. From junior high, senior high, college. Yeah, and were you popular for, for good reasons yeah. or bad yeah. reasons? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was very popular because um, you love the women. I, was, I was loved by everyone because I don't discriminate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't discriminate. No matter who you are, whether male or female, whether disabled or, mm. yeah. Because I, I remember when I was in senior high, I used to be with blind students. You be with them? Yeah. Oh. I, I was part of those who were taking care of them, getting them ready for class, taking them to the dining hall. Like I was part of those who were taking care of them. So do you know, do you know why I asked be with? Because on this podcast, they are... Certain, meaning so yeah, yeah. yeah. I, understand, I understand every, every <laughs> everything you say can have have yeah. cause said oh and abraham knew his, his wife, wife. <laughs> it, it means yeah yeah so i've been with her yeah or oh, i've you, been you get, with you, blind you get people going. Yeah. yeah so we yeah. have to be specific yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. i think you were talking about you being a nurse and stuff like that yeah. that wasn't the path i wanted to go but mm. I, I, that's where I find myself now, and I think I like it. Mm. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I like it. You because swear? I like it, yeah. Because it has taught me a lot. And if <laughs> and God were to judge you on it, <laughs> you are honest that you like it. Yes, I like it. If you are, if if you were offered a hundred million pound to quit, to to denounce nursing, yeah, it's a profession I can't quit, but I can take the hundred million pound. <laughs> <laughs> boys can lie boys <laughs> boys it's a profession so i can't so i realized yeah um my loving nature that was where i, I was supposed to go but i didn't see it because mm. it was my dad and my mom i think they saw that yeah because i wanted to go into the financial sector the banking sector mm. yeah all right where the pods pods belly yeah stuff. Okay. So I like money. So <laughs> if not nursing, what would you have been doing by now? I would have preferred entrepreneur. Yeah. You would have preferred to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Where, where, whichever yeah. space you find yourself, you can be an entrepreneur. Which, which field? Finance, um, oil and gas, um, oil and gas, engineering, anything that science. comes in mind no, that specific. I would earn a huge sums of money to help others. Yeah. So, do, do you know how funny this sounds? <laughs> <laughs> this guy wants to earn huge sums of money. Yeah. And he's an ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the irony. The irony. That's what I'm saying. The nurse is a profession to me. So. Yeah. So, if I understand you well, you're in nursing because you love it and you want to help people. But on the side... There are other serious love. things. Yeah. You came to love nursing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't like it at first. Yeah. And now you you want to be in it. Sure. But you have plans to do something else that can get you more money. Because obviously, you're not going to buy a Lamborghini with nursing money. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. At least we all can agree on something. I can yeah. buy some biscuits with nursing, not Lamborghini. Biscuits? Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that how terrible nursing is? That's how I can describe it, yeah. Really? Oh. 
yeah. you left Ghana all yeah. the way to pursue nursing in the UK. Why why are you doing to quit in Ghana? Um, I realized back home what I was taught in nursing was not the nursing I was practicing because when I came here, it's a, it's a, it's a very different ball game altogether because I learned a lot of conditions back home. I never saw even one third of them. I'm it, just seeing most, them. Most, it's, it's the same everywhere, bro. Yeah. Most doctors don't get to see some conditions and you don't pray for someone to come in sick. Sure. Once the person comes in sick, that is when you get. So you are, it's, you get a privilege to see that condition. It's not something you yeah, wish for, a, but a banker, yeah. A banker or accountant will learn how to calculate huge sums of money. And then he would calculate it in money every is... small corner that he is. <laughs> so, <laughs> since I was taught those conditions, I you, was you, expecting to see them and practice them. Then, then you have to, I don't know if you can create people with such conditions Self-care. Then we, we all see. Because you don't, you know, some of those strange conditions you're talking about, people have to suffer the pain for it yeah. before you see it. So we, we don't, um, it's, it's, it's something that is organized by nature and we can't control nature. Yeah, so sure. absolutely. So, no, yeah, really it, sure. it happens. And of course, probably uh, there were no logistics or the, the kind of things that you needed to practice your nursing back home. Was they it are all enough? Part. Yeah, they are all part. Yeah. And it was quite terrible. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think it's, it's uh, the same everywhere in Ghana because there are very good hospitals where you you get everything you need. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. yeah. I think um, myself and Francis, we were lucky to work in... One of the best. The you best. Know, the best. Yeah. The best. Not one of the best, we guys. Let's mention the names. <laughs> The those I, I, who know know yeah those yeah, who know know i, I, I won't I mention the, the name but we worked paying, in the best hospital a, a visit, so yeah I know, I know we worked in the best hospital in west africa yeah yeah, yeah. if you don't understand go and yeah, bend the seat no, yeah. they, they peppered me small but <laughs> <laughs> yeah right so, yeah mm, should i continue with the introduction uh, yeah oh. let's move on to other things about yourself yeah yeah um i'm also the firstborn of my parents and i think uh, i like that position yeah so i i've always you know wondered what exactly it feels like when people talk about being a firstborn child and stuff like that and i feel it's a great opportunity to get insights into what it's like because francis you're a firstborn yeah and the queen's a firstborn it's, it's all fun of course yeah. it comes yeah. with a lot of responsibilities yeah. even than your mom and your dad yeah. yeah yeah so what are some of the realities that comes with being a firstborn child you are involved in everything because your siblings will call you mom has done this dad has done this junior bro has done this so everything you are the center you are the center between your siblings and your parents wow and the at large, the extended extended family. But, yeah. but do you know it's a privilege if you get younger people coming to you because we there are some young people that perceive at some adults in quote to be stupid to the extent that they wouldn't go to them for advice. So yeah. if you get someone coming to you, either young or old, coming to you for advice or coming to report something to you, the person thinks you are wise enough to be able to handle sure. that situation. Because it will be very embarrassing where you, we have adults at home and kids wouldn't go to them for anything. Sure. They'll go to their yeah. neighbor instead of family for advice. And Because it depends on the person, the individual. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's great. Iris, irrespective of the fact that it's a responsibility. But yeah, I think it's, it's, it's yeah, nice. Yeah, I like yeah. it. So have you at any point felt like it was a burden to be the first one child? Yes, because you are the your siblings look up to you, yeah, and your parents also look up to you because you are their first fruit, and they expect much from you. They expect that you will attain a height, probably they they did not get there. 
So you have to attain a certain height that your siblings can catch up to. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a very huge responsibility. And that has kept me going. Yeah. So if I do one thing, if I, if I buy a car today, that thing will push me to buy another car because that one car will be used by me and the other car will be used by the family. Yeah. So that has cool. kept me going. Francis, do you want to throw some insight into that? Mm. No, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, so is there a point where you feel like you've disappointed those who look up to you as a firstborn child? Has there ever been a point where you feel like, nah, I've been a disappointment in this way or that way? Because I, I think it's a great responsibility to have your parents looking up to you, to have your younger siblings looking up to you. Uh, it can be tough, I think. Yeah. yeah, it can be tough. And at some point, your decisions and and where you wanted to go might cause that because if they were expecting that you become this and tomorrow you are this it means where well, this is what what do you classify as this oh example if they were expecting you to become someone great in future like a teacher a professional teacher a banker and <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow you are <laughs> guys i'm sorry i'm sorry you're a truck pusher or something <laughs> like <laughs> no disrespect yeah. to you. No, yeah. but okay, continue. Why why are you guys laughing? A professional no, it's, teacher it's, or it's all right. It's all right. Teaching is a nice profession though. Yeah. But I, I, I don't think I'll go there. Is <laughs> it is it typical of um uh, African parents to expect their children to tow a certain line of career or yeah. lifestyle. Oh, that one, yeah, that one. For that one, it's it. I would say it's normal in in Ghana, or it's normal for an African parent. They would es they would want you to do what they wish. Mm. Yeah, so it's not what you, the individual, wish. Most of the times, it depends. It it when we take the rich people. They can allow their kids to decide what they want to be, but when you come to the middle class and the and the lower class, you they will detect it to you. Are you so, sure? Because yeah, I mostly. think most rich people would like their children to be their heirs or yeah to toe that that line of um, success they've they've achieved. Every every if I become. Um, a very wealthy person in business. I would want my child to become my successor to run that business when I'm late. Yes. Be yeah. Because I would say from my point of view, because the, your child was growing up to see you as a rich person. Do you understand? And seeing my dad being rich, and this is the path my dad took to become rich. So let's put that thing aside. Then... With the lower class, my dad is a farmer. Seeing how hard we walk for miles to the farm, carry the goose, bring them back home, store them or any whichever way, transport them to the market, sell before we can get something small. You would think that, oh no, I need to curve the, 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 the road small. But they might, at the end of the day, influence you with you don't have money you know we can't afford being a doctor you, you so in a way they would influence your path i think mm. i think rich or poor if there'll be an influence there there will be yeah, yeah. Sure, sure but but you know uh, i understand that if you come from a poor family or a trying family let me put it that yeah. way sure. and they they want to steer your life in a certain direction i wouldn't want my child to become less successful than i am yeah so we we, we have rich farmers where there are farmers who are proud to allow their sons and daughters to become farmers yeah if they are succeeding in that that sphere so no profession is a waste uh no career profession 
will, will be classified as doctors, nurses, lawyers. But any choice of career or job you want to pursue, it's not a waste. As far as it's meeting your daily needs, yeah. you're able to help people out of it. Totally and then true. you're able to build a certain um, success for yourself. I think your, your child can follow suit. But people should be allowed, especially children, to, children, to make, decide for They should for be guided themselves. to yeah. make good choices, but yeah. they shouldn't be pressured to go into uh, a certain line of or make certain decisions that they're not comfortable with. Yeah, so um, still on the issue of being a firstborn child, you've got people looking up to you. Sure. Who then do you, do you look up to? I would also say I also look up to successful people. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I have a mentor who okay. I look up to. Do you want to share? Yeah. And I think he'll be happy. He's in the person of Honorable Atto Fawson, mm. my constituency MP. Yeah. Oh, right. Parliament. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, let me say I'm, I'm quite close to him and me coming to the United Kingdom, I visited him before I, I took my flight there. Yeah. And he gave me an advice. And all the advice he gave me, I wrote them down in my diary and I keep on reflecting on them. And they are all part because he was once staying in the United Kingdom as well. And yeah. what he did to become successful was what he told me. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I'm, I'm on the path. I'm on the right path, yeah. Mm. So I look up to him, not as in to become an MP, but to become responsible, successful, and and the the way he he is, yeah, 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 yeah right. I'm I'm sure he's a very great person to sure. be able to you know influence you that much. Yeah, cool. Are there any other people that inspire you? Yeah, my dad. Mm. And I'm proud to say that my dad. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think yeah, my dad too. Um, he's late to me. He's a rest in peace. But he 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 was and still is a very great influence on me and the yeah. things I do. Yeah. And sometimes you know, you just for me, I just wish he was here to you know see all of sure. this and stuff like that. Anyway, my dad and with the support of my mom. Yeah. Because yeah. well, sometimes my dad would would tell me something i would have to go to bed think about it then go to my mom and discuss with my mom mm. and i think my mom was also always in line with what my dad would say and they have been of help to me yeah i can't do without them they are good great <clears throat> so before you go um we've just got some trivial questions to ask you sure. yeah so who are your top five Artists from Africa. Artists? Yeah. Oh, I'll go for Kweku Frimpo. Who's Kweku Frimpo? <laughs> Black Sheriff. Oh, that's not the name. Black Oh, oh yeah. Black Oh, yeah. Black because, Sheriff, yeah. Because he he composed a song with my name, so Kweku Frimpo. I like that song. Okay. Cool. So Black o, um who else? Um, Is it in order or in no particular order? In no particular order. Okay. Because I... Daddy Lumba too is one because okay, two. his songs are quite intimate. Yeah. And <laughs> Kobna Kobna. Yeah, it's also one of my favorites. Yeah. I like I like his songs. I like his songs. One one song, um to crab or yourself or something like that. Yeah. It's it's nice. It's a nice song. And if I if I feel like <clears throat> I want to be a romantic guy, that's the song I <laughs> <laughs> I mostly listen to. What's what's the title I again? This guy um, I don't think I can get. But you just the, said something. Yeah, to crab what you say, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Continue. And so three. Who else? You've got two more. I'll, I'll add Shatawale and Stone Boy. Uh, yeah. Five. Oh, cool. Right. Everyone knows my favorite already, so I don't need to go through that again. <laughs> Same as me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cool. Any. Final words for firstborn children. Um, I would say always look up to your parents, even if 
you were not you didn't even you didn't come to meet your father or your mother at least people will tell you who they were because they are great motivators and they are the first people you will meet in life because you grew up in the house with them and at least you need to tap certain things from them tap certain things from them i mean is like if your dad bought one car you should strive to buy two so that you too, your son or your daughter would buy three. It should always be that motivation. So I would also say, I would say, always look up to your parents. Responsible parents, I mean, yeah. Okay. Then you can choose any other responsible person that can influence your life. It can be your sister, it can be your auntie, it can be your cousin. It can be anybody. It can be your boss at work. It can be anybody. Yeah. Uh, you can succeed whether you're the last one or, but it comes with more responsibility being the eldest and the first born child. But my siblings are very supportive. They used to send me money way back in school. My younger sister, I think she was by then 12 or 13. And I was in training college. She would call me and tell me, oh, no, no, I've got 20 cities. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll send 10 cities or 15 cities to you. And, you know, yeah. So I go out of my way to do the best I can for them. And yeah, wow. so I don't regret it. I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed today's conversation. It's been an eye opener yeah. for me. And um, a big shout out to you, my biggest brother, um, Kwame Akwa. And I think I've probably haven't thanked him enough mm. to... Considering yeah. all this stuff you guys are talking about, and yeah, mm -hmm. I really do appreciate you, big brother. And uh, yeah, we're all happy that even though that's no more, you're finding your own way of, you know, being there for us. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Right. So, guys, thank you so much for joining yet another episode. You know what to do. Leave whatever comment you've got in there. If you want to share some ideas on how we all can be successful, you know, elderly brothers not just first born sons you know just leave what it is in the comments and you know what to do like subscribe hit the notification icon so that as soon as content drops you'll be the first to get it and do well to share that as well this i repeat is your favorite podcast in the whole wide world, world. numero uno see you <laughs>